Chester, uh, how's the body? Uh, obviously, you know, after the Sheffield game, chance to reflect, uh, recuperate and, and, and get a bit of a rest? Uh, body's, body's at worst away, to be fair. Played on weekend internationally as well with Wales, so I hadn't really had much of a rest. I think some of the lads have, some haven't, so it's uh, it's been one of them seasons, I think, for everyone, really, uh, especially with the heat coming on now, the ground's getting harder and everyone's getting a few bumps and bruises, so... Uh, but yeah, um, looking back at the Sheffield game, um, good game, good performance. You know, hopefully we sort of carry that momentum on, and it hasn't stopped with a week off uh, into 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 this week coming against Dewsbury. When you look at that Sheffield performance, it was on the back of what was a very tough period and demanding period. Three games in eight days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just speaking to Ben Evans uh, on Tuesday regarding how many games he's had in the last two weeks. I think he's had something like four. So it's. Uh, I mean, you could imagine how demanding that is on the border. Um, so yeah, I think everyone was quite happy to sort of get a get a week off. As I say, some haven't. Um, but I mean, we'll have we'll have some fresher bodies, if anything, as a whole. Um, and yeah, hopefully, um, bring it to Jewsbury. We're at the halfway point in the the season now. Bradford just there or thereabouts uh, outside the playoff positions. How do you assess the the Bradford Bulls in 2022 so far? It's a weird one because I mean. In the championship, you can never be too sure where you're going to finish. Especially, you know, some teams start really bad and come really good at the end. Some teams start really good and go really bad. Um, so I think it's early, early doors, and we're mid, we're midway through the season, aren't we? Or just over, if that. So anything can happen. I know people have always said they're not backing us anymore, saying, "Oh, you know, we're not going to get in the playoffs." But I generally think, you know, with the squad we've got, we just tweak up a few things. I reckon we could easily make the playoffs. You know, I think you know a few a few wins build that momentum. You know, we, we get a win streak and, and, and we go off and you know we go off in a tantrum and, and you know we, we get in the top four. Um, I, personally, I think through through being here for oh, around ten games now, eleven games, uh, the squad is more than capable to get in that top four easily. You know, you've got some players who you know have played in Super League, you know, played in top championship sides. Um, you know, we just need I think to to, to work as a team on and find that balance. And I think when we do. There's no stopping us. A chance to obviously continue on that momentum and that form uh, against Dewsbury, but on the flip side of it, they're at the wrong end of the table. They're very desperate and hungry and, and fighting for the championship lives. Yeah, you, you you can never be too sure when you play bottom table teams. But as I say, some teams start start bad and come good. Um, Dewsbury are a good team. Um, this. This championship this year, as, as a whole, is probably the most competitive championship I've ever played in, um, and I've and I've known her for a very long time. So any team can can win any game. You know, four years ago maybe you play bottom of the table and you expect them to get absolutely fucked. Um, but in, in this day and age, and you know this season, you could play bottom of the table and still get pipped. So you just you just never know. So I mean. You've got to come. You know, you've, always, you've got to always be on on guard when it comes to playing any team in this in this league. And um, yeah, I look forward to the game. On the back of the last home game against Newcastle, uh, it'd be good to get a bit of momentum as well with back to back home wins for the for the first time this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, as I say, we just need to keep we just need to keep building that momentum. Um, the more we build, the better. And as I say, you know, the fans help just as much as well. You know, getting on the back of us and you know and, and pushing us forward. Yeah, we've had a rough start. Um, yeah, we've made some mistakes as a team, um, but we're learning from them. Um, and I think you're going to get a lot of mistakes as a new team that's put together. Um, so yeah, I, you know, as I said, if we can build that momentum, fix up on their mistakes, I genuinely think this squad's going to come really good at the end of the season. And I think, I think a lot of teams are going to be, you know, going to be looking out for us because uh, it's going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to get, a, it's going to be a bumpy ride for these other teams. The deal to bring you in from Huddersfield on the season on loan was obviously orchestrated by John Keir. John's obviously left the club. Um, how are you finding the transition uh, under Matt Dunning here? Good, really good. Um, I mean, obviously, I spent time with Mark under John Keir, um, top bloke, really nice guy. You know, manages his play as well. Um, he's changed a few things. It's working for us. Um, so yeah, um, I, mean, I look forward to sort of see what what it brings. I mean, I don't want to speak too soon. And he's only been he's only been in charge for you know a couple of weeks or, or three three or four weeks, as a give or take. But um, yeah, I look forward to sort of see what, you know what, what he brings to the table and, and how he can um, 
get us into that top four. Is the club's hunt for a head coach uh, a distraction to the players or do you just shoot yourselves out from that? Um, no, yeah, I think you shoot yourself out from it. I mean, don't get me wrong, um, we've, we've got a good coach, at, as, you know, as Matt done in, in, in itself right now, so to us, um, yeah, John Levens, it, it's a blow for us. A lot of people had good relationships with him. I personally got a good relationship with him through Wales um, and through being here. He's, he's, the, he's one of the main reasons I, I came to Bradford. Um, I know through being out for a good long period of time, two and a half years, not playing, you know, if I was going to go on loan to a club, I wanted a, a person who could look after me and, you know, physically, um, and, you know, and give, and give me that player management I needed. And John did. I uh, had a few niggles when I came here. Uh, he's looked after me. He's kept me in the game. He kept me playing, um, and he's kept me performing at a high level every Sunday. Um, so, yeah, I think coming to, going back to the um, new coach. Um, no, I don't think it's a distraction. I think. I think it comes when it comes, um, and when we sort of cross that bridge when we get there. And just finally, Chester, in terms of your personal performances out there on the field, uh, how, how would you assess your performances? Uh, I'm, I'd say I'm, I'm a bit off what I, what I was, but I'd be pr pr prior to me getting injured. Um, I, I know that. I think I thought to myself I'd come back flying. Which, you know, wouldn't be a problem when it came to you know getting in the field again. But it's been a bit hard. You know, I've had. I've had three surgeries in, in the space of you know two years, so it's it's took its toll on my body. I feel as if you know, I spoke to Leroy Kudjo at his field because he was out for two years of his knee, and he said, "Look, when you come back, it's, it'll take you a good you know a good year to sort of get going again." Uh, I took it with a pinch of salt, thinking you know I'd be fine, but he's he's right. You know you, you can't just come back from these big you know big surgeries and expect to just you know kick off flying. Performance-wise, I feel as if yeah, I've, I've performed in it. A decent championship level. Um, it's nowhere near good enough to get into the Super League flight, if, if I'm honest. Don't get me wrong, I don't feel as I'd be uncomfortable in a Super League environment, but I don't think I'd, I'd stand out. And I think that's that's what I need to be doing. And to do that, you need to be standing out in the championship every week. And I don't think I have. So, yeah, I've got a lot to build on. Um, but I'm excited to sort of see what happens because I know what I can bring to the table when I'm 100% fit. Um, and you know, obviously, come next, come next year, if I get a good pre-season under me, wherever I am, I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a really good season for me, really, really good season. And on the back of those personal challenges for you to sort of better yourself and get back to the best at how you know you can be, Chester, that's only going to benefit Bradford for this year. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm picking niggles up in, in games here and there, but that's rugby. Uh, everyone's got niggles, you know. So you know, I'm not looking for sympathy if I, if I hurt my shoulder or get a bit of a sore chest. You know, you've got people playing with the exact same injuries, or if not, probably probably worse. We don't know. Everyone's got different pain thresholds. So um, yeah, I'm hoping, obviously, you know, throughout the season, you know, these these little niggles sort of go away, and I can I can sort of find a bit of form and, and, and push on from there. I mean, as I say, I'm. I'm, you know, I'm working my ass off every, every day to sort of get back to that level I was. It just takes time and a bit of patience, uh, but it'll come. Cheers, Chester. Cheers, thanks.